Okay, we're going to take a look at another descriptive type question. And once again, this has been borrowed from freestudy.co.uk. Now the starting point again is to produce a sketch of the scenario so that we can determine which of the terms in the Bernoulli's equation we can neglect. So let's go through the question, extract the information and produce a rough sketch. It begins by saying a pipe carries oil of density 800 kilograms per meter cubed. So we have the density of our fluid, rho, as 800 kilograms per meter cubed. It goes on to say the pipe has a bore area, this time it gives the area rather than the diameter, of 0.005 meters squared, and the oil flows with a mean velocity of four meters per second. So it's given us some information there about the area and also the velocity. It also tells us that it has a gauge pressure of 800 kilopascals. What it's referring to there is position one, but we don't yet know where that is in relation to position two. It goes on to state that point two is further along the pipe and there is a bore area of 0.002 meters squared. So we've got a reduction in area and the level is 50 meters above point one. And it wants us to calculate the pressure at point two. So what we can establish from the question is we have a pipe where the bore area reduces and in addition to the bore area reducing, we have an elevation. Point two is 50 meters above point one. So let's start with point one at the bottom. We have an elevation to point two. And the other thing that we know is the bore area reduces, like so. Again, it's just a rough sketch. We know that point two is 50 meters above point one. So if we add a dashed line to our center line, then we know that this distance here is 50 meters. We have a change in elevation. The question also told us that at position one, the area, so A1, was 0.005 meters squared. That's already in SI units. And it has a mean velocity, u1, at that point of 4 meters per second. We're also given the pressure at position 1 of 800 kilopascals. It gives us some information about position 2. It tells us that the area at position 2 is 0 0.002 meters squared but it doesn't give us any further information. It doesn't tell us the pressure at point two because that's what it wants us to calculate and it doesn't tell us the velocity at point two. But we're going to need to determine the velocity at point two in order to calculate the pressure at point two. The other thing that it tells us is that we can neglect friction. It tells us that right at the end of the question there. So first of all then, let's see what terms we can get rid of. We have the Bernoulli's equation at the top, moving from left to right, P1, well we have a value of P1 given, so we can't lose that term. Next we have the term rho gz1. Well if we use position one as our datum, then the elevation of position one is zero. The elevation of position two relative to position one is 50 meters. So it makes sense to set z1 to zero, so we can get rid of that term. We then have rho u1 squared over 2, and we have a value given for u1. Moving to the right-hand side, the question wants us to calculate p2, so we need to keep that term in. We have rho gz2, well, we have an elevation at position 2 relative to position 1, so we need to leave that term in. And we have rho u2 squared over 2, well, we have a velocity at position 2, so we need to leave that term in. It does tell us that we can neglect losses, so we'll lose PL. So one of the first steps here is to calculate U2. We need to calculate U2 before we can calculate P2. And we can use the continuity equation for this, because we know that U1, A1, equals U2, A2. Now from our question, we were given values for A1 and A2, and we was given a value for u1. So let's rearrange this formula to make u2 the subject. 
And to get u2 on its own, all we need to do is divide each side by a2. So u2 is u1 a1 divided by a2. And plugging in values, we get u2 equals 4 for u1, 0 0.005 for a1, and 0 0.002 for a2, giving us a value of u2 equal to 10 meters per second. So let's add that value to our diagram and then we can calculate the pressure at position 2. OK, so we've been able to reduce our Bernoulli's equation by cancelling out a couple of terms. So our Bernoulli's equation is now just P1 plus rho u1 squared over 2 equals P2 plus rho gz2 plus rho u2 squared over 2. Now the thing that we're trying to get on its own this time is P2. So we need to subtract two terms from the right hand side. We need to subtract rho gz2 and we need to subtract rho u2 squared over 2. So we can rewrite this. We'll get P2 equals P1 plus rho u1 squared over 2 minus rho gz2 because we're subtracting that from the right hand side minus rho u2 squared over 2 again because we're subtracting that from the right hand side now it's just a case of plugging in our numbers because the pressure at position 2 is p1 well, P1's 800 kilopascals, or 800,000, plus rho u1 squared over 2, where we have our density, 800. We have u1 as 4. We have rho gz2, so minus 800, times gravity, 9.81, times z2, which is 50 meters. And then we need to minus rho u2 squared over 2. So 800. u2 we said was 10 over 2. So note that we're subtracting rho gz2 and we're subtracting rho u2 squared over 2. Now running that all through the calculator gives us a pressure at position 2 equal to 374,000, or expressed in kilopascals, 374 kilopascals. So from this example and the earlier example, we've seen how we can take a descriptive question in order to produce a sketch of the scenario. And once we've produced a sketch of the scenario, we can refer back to our Bernoulli's equation and remove the terms that aren't relevant. Finally, we can determine the unknown parameters within the fluid system.